What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and I'm back with an update to a video I did a while ago on how to create a Rust server and add Oxide to it. Since then, Oxide has become a UMod and the way to install it has changed slightly as well as everything to do with Rust. So in this video today, I'll show you how to install a Rust server, get it working so that your friends can come and join, install UMod, get some plugins on it, configure it, and then from there, you can probably figure out the rest. This is just a quick start. If you'd like me to do more videos on this topic, make sure to leave a like and comment down below so I know what to do. Go to Google and search for Download Steam CMD. Scroll down to just past the categories and click the download link right here. We'll make a new folder on the desktop called Rust Server for now, and we'll extract the zip we downloaded into here. Wherever you want the server installed, make sure to do this there. Once that's done, double-click steamcmd.exe and wait for it to fully start. Type in Login Anonymous. And before we get to downloading the Rust server, if you'd like to install it to a different location other than the Steam Apps folder in here, then make sure to create that folder now. You can use the force underscore install underscore dir command, followed by the folder you want to install it into in inverted commas. For me, I'm going to skip this step as it makes updating it a lot easier. You won't need to add the force install dir to your update script later. Enter app underscore update 258550 validate and wait for the Rust dedicated server to download and install. And before we want to run our server, we want to quickly create an update script so we don't need to open up Steam CMD anymore and type it in manually. So we'll go into common Rust dedicated and you can either do it in here or you can do it in the same folder as Steam CMD. For simplicity, I'll do it here. Good and new text document and we'll name it update rust.bat. Right click edit and here we'll type in steamcmd.exe plus login space anonymous plus app underscore update 258550 validate and then a plus quit. Go ahead and hit control S and if we were to run it, it would do exactly this just for updating the server. So usually you'll only need to run this when the Rust update comes out each month, but if you're having issues, you can always run it and it validates the server files as well. You can go ahead and quit out of that and we'll leave it there. Go into Steam Apps, Common, Rust Dedicated, and in here we'll make a new bat file as well. We'll call this start.bat. Again, right click, edit, and then we're gonna go ahead and copy the command down in the description below. Echo off, colon start, a bunch of Rust stuff, and then go to start. Basically what happens here is this is a loop that'll be run forever until you close it, obviously, which will keep opening the server if it goes down and crashes for some reason. Obviously you can change the server port, the server seed, world size, max players, and host name. There's a bunch of other commands that you can have in here that I'll have linked in the link right below this copy and paste in the description below. I'm going to leave that out for now. So the port can be whatever you want it to be. By default, it's usually 28015. And this needs to be port forwarded in not only your local router, the one that connects you to the internet and your Windows firewall. If you don't know how to use it on your Windows firewall and you just want to test, I'd recommend disabling your firewall and testing but do make sure to eventually get around to adding an exception to it so that you are more secure. Go ahead and save this, and we can go ahead and run it. You'll see that it's generating files, and eventually it'll start typing stuff in here. Yours may look a bit different. Mine seems to be a bit glitchy where it overwrites things at the top, but it should still work nonetheless. Currently, it's warming up the map, and it should start generating relatively soon. And there we go, it says Steam Server Connected. Checking new Steam item definitions. And it should be online from this point. Next, if you want your friends to join, assuming you've already port forwarded and added the exception for the Rust dedicated.exe into your firewall or disabled it completely, you'll need your external IP in order for someone to connect to your server. To do that, simply go to Google and type in what is my IP. Go ahead and copy what I've blurred out here, which is your IP. And then for someone to connect, you'd usually add colon 28015 or whatever you set your server port to up here. And 
in order to connect to your own local server running on your local machine, you'll use either a local host, colon, the server port, or 127.0.0.1, colon, your port. I'll use localhost to connect to it. I'll go ahead and open up console with F1, connect, and then we'll paste in localhost, comma, 28015. Hit enter, you can go ahead and close that, and you should see that it's connecting. As soon as we manage to connect, you'll see that our name and everything else pops up here. And there we have it. You can see that we've connected to the server, and we can stand up and walk around. If you have friends, they could also join at this point. But that probably isn't what you're here for. You want to see how to install the new Oxide, which is called UMod, and put some plugins on it, because right now, it's a pretty bland server. So we'll go ahead and disconnect, and even quit the game entirely. Now, usually to close your server, you can just type in quit, and it will save the map upon exiting. If you don't think that'll work and you want to double, make sure that it's going to save, you can use server.save. Typing in quit and hitting enter does the exact same thing, it saves, and then it shuts down completely. If it restarts like this, don't be afraid to just kill it like that, because we have got it starting in a loop. We can go ahead and close out of that, and return to this base folder. To install umod, head back to the browser of your choice and type in download umod. We'll go to the first link, pick Rust, and it should download here. We'll click it so it opens when it finishes downloading. Once it's finished downloading, you can just drag and drop this folder here into the one here. When it says that it already contains the folder, hit yes. Do this for all current items, yes again, and then replace the files. Now that we've done that, we now have umod running on the server. If we go ahead and start up the server, you'll see that a couple new folders should generate. We now have Oxide and a compiler.exe. Inside of Oxide is where you'll usually put your plugins under plugins and the config under config. So while it's starting up, we can go ahead and go to the plugins tab at the top here. We'll hit the Rust tag, and these are all the ones available for Rust. So let's simply go sort by most downloads, and we'll download, say, Gather Manager, which increases the amount of items gained from gathering resources. So we'll click on it, click download, and then we can go ahead and drag and drop the .cs file into our plugins folder. And then once the server is running and it's in this state, we can type in oxide.reload space star to reload everything or whatever you'd want. And you can see a loaded plugin gathering manager. Now that that's done, we can go to config and you'll see that we have a gather manager.json. Open it with the text editor of your choice and we can go ahead and modify things here. If you're unsure of what things do, we can go back to the umod page for the mod that we downloaded, and you'll see a bunch of commands here. Here's a couple of examples down here. Gather.rate dispenser wood 10. Gain 10 times as much wood from hitting trees. So we'll go ahead and paste that command in here. Hit enter, and you'll see here that it returns you have set the gather rate for wood to 10 times from resource dispensers. We can go ahead and set that to some crazy number, just to set an example. Now, before we're going to join the server, we're going to give ourselves admin, because usually you'll need to disconnect and reconnect in order for admin to register. So for that, we need our Steam ID. Head across to your Steam page, and if you see this link at the top ending in slash profiles slash a bunch of numbers, you can go ahead and copy these numbers. Inside of here, we'll type in owner ID, followed by your Steam64 ID, and an optional username if you want, so I'll go tech Lobo. And then from here, you can also add a reason if you'd want. And if your reason contains spaces or your name contains spaces, then just make sure to add inverted commas on both sides. Hit enter and you'll see it says added owner, technobo, steam ID, followed by the steam ID you put in. If you don't see profiles slash a bunch of numbers here, go ahead and copy page URL. I'll go to something like steamid.uk and I'll paste in my URL here. After hitting search, you can see that this is my community ID right here. You can, of course, use any other website to find this, and you can find more by doing Steam ID Finder on Google and clicking any of the ones here. It'll all work plus minus the same. You're looking for the Steam 64 ID, otherwise known as the long string of numbers with no special characters. Now that we've given ourselves admin, let's go ahead and rejoin the server and check that it worked. We'll go ahead and open up console again, 
connect localhost 28015, hit enter, and now we're connecting. Don't forget that once we've added ourselves as owner, we need to use server.write cfg, which will save the config and save us as admin. Of course, you can skip this step, and when you type quit eventually, you may need to give yourself admin the next time you launch the server. Now that we're back in the server, I can hit F1 and head across to items and you'll see that I can spawn myself anything. Now that we're here, we can also head back to the console tab and type in noclip. Now we can noclip up to anything up here. So we'll quickly fly up to the closest tree, noclip again, and if we bash it, you'll see that we get a hell of a lot of wood out of it. This is of course the mod that we installed, and if we were to give ourselves another tool, you can see that this scales as well. We just got 34,000 from smacking the tree once. So that's how to install UMod plugins, which was previously known as Oxide, on your new shiny Rust server. If friends aren't able to connect to your server, make sure that your firewall settings are correct, allow the Rust dedicated server through it, and that you've port forwarded to your PC or whatever computer you're hosting this on. If you're not sure on how to port forward, click the card in the top right if, it, if I can put it a second time, otherwise the link will be down in the description below. Thank you all for watching, my name is Bean Technobo, here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.